In this video, we will deconstruct standard 6.ns.1 of the grade 6 Georgia Standards of Excellence for Mathematics. 6.ns.1 is the lone standard within the cluster that asks students to apply and extend previous understandings of multiplication and division to divide fractions by fractions. Specifically, this standard requires students to interpret and compute quotients of fractions and solve word problems involving division of fractions by fractions including reasoning strategies, such as using visual fraction models and equations to represent the problem. There are several different examples of division situations students can expect to encounter in grade six, which are shown below the standard. Pause the video here and carefully read and discuss each example with your colleagues. You may have heard the old adage, yours is not to reason why, just invert and multiply. This is actually a gross misrepresentation of best practice. The spirit of these words harkens back to the days where students were expected to passively memorize rules and procedures without conceptual understanding. So let's nix the tricks in the beginning and allow students to make sense and meaning of division with fractions, not to blindly memorize and apply the invert and multiply algorithm. Because research shows that if we teach procedures before we teach the underlying concepts, students are less likely to learn the concepts. Which is why we will demonstrate a progression of learning based on the CRA sequence, starting with concrete materials like fraction tiles, fraction circles, fraction towers, before moving to drawings and then equations. Let's look at the vertical progression of fraction division. In grade 5, students learn to interpret fractions as division. They solved simple word problems such as, if four people share three pizzas equally, well, how much pizza will each person get? In other words, three pizzas divided by four people is the same as three divided by four or three over four. So each person gets three fourths of a pizza. Check out the video on 5.nf.3 to learn more. Also in grade five, students divide unit fractions by whole numbers like one third divided by two, which is equal to one sixth. Students also divide whole numbers by unit fractions in grade five, like two divided by one third, which is equal to six. Students used visual models to reason about division in mathematical and real world problems in grade five. Check out the video on 5.nf.7 to learn more. Fast forward to grade seven, students will extend what they learn about dividing fractions in grade six by efficiently multiplying and dividing positive and negative rational numbers like the examples shown here. Connecting to students' prior knowledge is a high leverage practice that should be considered when introducing new content. The formative assessment lesson, Interpreting Multiplication and Division, is a perfect way to begin the study of fraction division. Almost all of these problems should be familiar to students from their work in grade 5. In this task, students will match various representations of multiplication and division of fractions and whole numbers. The representations included are numerical expressions, word problems about pizzas, and a variety of area models and set models. Students should work in pairs to group each set of matching representations and defend their reasoning to peers. One of the most interesting problems in this set is this one. Six boxes, each containing one pizza, are delivered to a party. I divide each pizza into three equal slices. How many slices are there altogether? Most students will initially match this situation to card C12, which shows the expression six times three, because they know that there are 18 slices of pizza altogether. However, the expression six divided into thirds is a better model for this particular problem because we're starting with six whole units that are actually being partitioned into three smaller pieces. This formative assessment lesson provides a rich backdrop for students to use intuition, reasoning, and discussion to highlight the inverse relationship between multiplication and division. Watch as these students reason together about this. Okay, so which one of these uh, pictures on your poster looks like the pizza problem in your hand? Six boxes. It would be this one, even though we added that, but it would be this problem specifically, just because it says six boxes okay. and um, three. So in, but if you switch it around, that would make it be three pizzas, like, three pizzas divided into six pieces, and the model would be completely different. So okay. it would be it would go to, to this one. Do you agree? No, I disagree because I think it I think it is this one because if Why? It, 
if you divide six pizzas into um, by, by, uh, and you divide it by a third, that means all the pizza, all the pizzas will um, uh, di uh, di um, will divide by the, will have three pieces and uh, making in third. So, so, um, so you can go with that. Yeah. So, why, why, so there are six pizzas with three slices. Okay. Let me ask you, why, what do you like better about this model than this model for this particular problem? Because there are, um, are pizzas and they're cut and they're cut into three slices. And okay. And um, these aren't aren't actually cut into slices, but these are these these are just like regular like circles like. So the, these um, eighteen circles here would each represent what in this problem? One pizza. One, sli one, one, sli one slice. One slice. One slice of pizza. pizza. But I feel like this one would be more. Like, I agree with him now because okay. this one would be more uh, like specific. The three, the, the three, sli the three slices eat, eat, um, make up uh, one of the one of the pizza, so it's easier to um, launch. Okay, so I, know I just want to ask you one last question. Go back to what I asked before. When you first read this pizza problem right here, you said the expression that came to your mind was. What? Six, six times, times three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, but now, what are you noticing? Well, I, I Is noticed, that six times three? No, it's division because they ask you to divide, but if you also think about it, multiplication would go with it. Because if you thought if you thought like three slices times the six full pizzas, that would equal eighteen. And it's still the same thing because six divided by one third is eighteen slices. The task we'll look at in greater detail is discovering an algorithm for dividing fractions because it provides an excellent introduction to modeling and making sense of fraction division. This is a scaffolding task, which means teacher guidance will be relatively high. However, students will actively analyze several cases of fractions divided by fractions and then make a conjecture about a procedure for dividing fractions in the end. The students in the following classrooms are using this teacher-created graphic organizer, which can be downloaded in the links below this video. In each case, students are first given a division expression, for example, 8 twelfths divided by 5 twelfths, and must translate the expression to a verbal phrase, how many groups of 5 twelfths are in 8 twelfths. Then students use manipulatives and drawings to model the expression and identify a quotient, which allows them to write an equation at the end. After analyzing at least six different carefully sequenced division expressions, students are asked to notice and wonder about the structure of the expressions and regularity through repeated reasoning. Let's watch as students grapple with and debate the quotient to the problem 8 twelfths divided by 5 twelfths. Most students will easily notice that the integer part of the quotient is 1 because there's one full group of 5 twelfths in 8 twelfths. But what about the fractional part of the quotient? Is it three-fifths, or is it three-twelfths, and why? So, and why, why would you say three-twelfths? So, because this would be eight-twelfths, and this is five-twelfths, so when take you take it away, it away and there's three-twelfths left. Okay. So we would do, and then we would simplify three-twelfths to one-fourth. One-fourth. Yeah, so it would be okay. one and one-fourth, because of the one group and the three-twelfths remaining. We, oh, we all said it was one because you can do five um, twelfths on eight twelfths, and then you can also put one fourth onto it, and it would. So, what's your quotient? We said one one fourth. This next group of students does not believe the quotient is one and three twelfths. Listen to how the teacher scaffolds their reasoning. So the numerator is so three. It's three something, right? Yeah. yeah. Numerator is three. Yeah. It's three, three pieces. Yeah. So three no, one and one four. No, not three. It would be three out of five. Yeah. There it is. Uh -huh. So what do you think? What, what, what group do you want? What group size do you want? If you if you had it your way, how many more pieces would you have? to fill out that group. Two more. You'd have two more, right? So if you imagine two more spaces there that are not filled in, what fraction of what you want do you actually have? Three. Three. Three fifths, right? Oh. So I think you should be confident in that quotient. Yeah. The most important part of this task comes at the end, where the teacher will provide a mix of focusing and funneling questions to see if students can discover the common denominator algorithm for dividing fractions by fractions. When asking focusing questions, such as what do you notice, it is important to validate all students' ideas as mathematically valuable while funneling them towards the mathematical goal of the lesson. Let's see what these students noticed. The mixed numbers became like um, 5 divided by 2, 6, it was 2 and 1 half in the beginning.
Okay, so the mixed numbers became improper fractions. Good. Anything else? Yeah, I saw that. I mean, I don't know. I just saw that the N1 is the same as the top one and the first and, one. Um, yes. Oh, okay. For the second one, they um, changed the numbers to common denominators. After a 30-second table talk, the teacher brings the group back together, whole class, to share their observations. So what were you going to say? She said, hey, I was kind of thinking that. What do you notice? I was going to say that um, the numerators of each, so as the first one, um, as an example, it says three, the two numerators are three and one, and basically like three over one, which would be three, and then five over two, five halves. Do you think that will always hold true? Yes. Yes. You do? So yeah, so, so who, who can summarize that conjecture? If what, then what? Go ahead. So if um, if two fractions that you're dividing have a common denominator, um, the numerator, the first number would be the numerator of the quotient, and then the second numerator would be the denominator. A great way to conclude this lesson is to ask students to use the manipulatives to consider why this common denominator algorithm always works. And an even deeper extension question might be, what would happen if we reverse the order of the divisor and the dividend? How would that change the quotient? Now that students understand the meaning of dividing fractions by fractions, let's have them apply this understanding to modeling with real world contexts. Imagine you have a dog and he is running low on dog food. For each meal, your dog eats three-fourths of a cup of dog food. You have a total of two and three-fourths cups of dog food remaining. How many more meals can your dog eat before running out of dog food? Listen and look for how the teacher asks questions focused on representation. Namely, does the student understand what the snap cubes represent in the given context? All right, so what are these blue cubes representing? They're representing how much dog food we have, how many cups of dog food we have remaining. Okay. Which is two and three fourths. Okay. okay. So there's three fourths of a dog food for each meal. So this can be represent three fourths. So it's three fourths. And what does three fourths represent in the problem? It, re it represents one meal. One meal, okay. So that's one meal away from the, um, how much is remaining. So why are you taking the blue ones away? Because since the dog's um, eating the uh, three-fourths, this is um, the, um, the th food that they have remaining. So since he's eating them, that's getting taken away. Okay. So that's why I'm taking them away. Okay, so that's how many meals um, the dog is going to eat. Okay, so the dog has three meals left. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> what about those two blue blocks? What do those represent? Um, this represents um, two fourths of a cup of dog food, which is two thirds of the meal. How do you know that? Because if you have um, like this model right here of three fourths, and this is two. Um, Two fourths. Well, this is three parts, and this is um, two of those equal parts. So um, two um, out of three parts is two thirds. Near the end of the unit, once students have explored the inverse relationship between dividing and multiplying fractions, consider using a rigorous open ended task like this one from openmiddle.com to get students thinking deeply about number sense. Best of all, this problem not only has multiple entry points, but it also has multiple solutions and teaches the value of perseverance, productive struggle, and growth mindset. Keep in mind, these types of rich problems are for all students, not just the high performing ones. The final segment of this video is for teacher content knowledge only. Practicing with this content will strengthen your understanding of the two different types of division contexts that students should grapple with in grade six. One type is called partitive or fair sharing division, and the other is known as measurement or repeated subtraction division. In both cases, you start with a total amount of something that will be divided into equal groups. In partitive division, you know how many groups to split the dividend into, but you do not know the quantity or size of each group. The quotient then is the size of one equal share. For example, 
you have three-fourths of a cup of yogurt to share equally among three friends. So three-fourths shared equally among three groups is one-fourth in each group. In measurement division, you do not know how many groups there will be. The quotient, then, is the number of equal groups. For example, you have three-fourths of a cup of yogurt. Each friend gets one-fourth of a cup of yogurt. How many friends can you serve? In other words, how many groups of one-fourth are in three-fourths? As you can probably see, measurement division cases are generally easier for students to conceptualize because with partitive division, sharing an amount equally among a fractional group size, such as two-thirds of a group, is conceptually much more difficult. This is why introductory tasks focused on modeling fraction division typically are within the realm of measurement division because repeated subtraction is much more intuitive to visualize. For more practice with identifying the two types of division, check out the task titled dividing fractions in context. Even if you do not use this task with your students, it will provide good practice for bolstering teacher content knowledge about the two different types of division contexts. For additional support and resources, please visit georgiastandards.org, where you can find additional tasks, intervention materials, and more.